everyone. My name is Rushida Waka, and uh, this is my second uh, time presenting for Leap at webinars. And I hope that uh, those who have heard my presentation before can actually, you know, just repeat it again. All right. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So I'm going to talk about blended and a flipped classroom. This is what actually I've been doing this year. I've started um, earlier in January, and I. You know, um, and suddenly then the MCO came up and, you know, I think it helps me actually when I establish this idea, it helps me with um, uh, during this MCO time. So uh, what is blended and flipped classroom? So uh, you're going to hear it my way. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, so uh, actually blended learning is a very huge term. Uh, it's about uh, incorporating uh, online learning and also the face-to-face -face learning. Um, and actually when you talk about blended learning, flip classroom is one of the model of blended learning. So I don't want to talk about this um, theory. I just want to um, share with you how I actually do this in 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 my school which is a secondary school and I only choose uh, one class actually because you know as, as what Kazubi was talking about is start uh, start small first so I started with one class all right so um, um, so basically what I'm I'm doing is combining blended learning which is face-to-face -face learning and there is a there is a concept of online there in which my students actually uh, bring their mobile device to classroom and also uh, the flip classroom is actually where I, you know, I had another class online with them and uh, not not an instructional class, not, I'm, I'm not teaching, but more on establishing tasks and um, assigning, assigning projects and stuff like that. Okay, next. So um, we'll see how I do it with my students. So it starts at home, actually, in which um, students are going to do self-directed learning. Um, so actually, at home, this is where I introduce a new topic. So sometimes um, it depends on the topic. Um, sometimes it could be very simple, and sometimes it's, it's, it's new for them. So introducing topic does not talk about uh, just mere mention, OK, tomorrow we are going to learn about this. No. OK, this is where I actually um, introduce the, the concept and the related vocabulary and ask them to do their own research on this and then this is where I assign them with certain tasks okay in which okay the next class you're going to do this um, this group is going to do this so uh, and here the students are going to do individual guide or guided research this is for um, low proficiency students they are going to be guided personally by me and um, uh, after that uh, when they come to class, uh, we have a special um, blended classroom uh, session on Friday in which uh, on this day, students are required to bring their mobile device to the classroom. And if there are students who cannot come up with their own mobile device, actually, uh, I will provide for them or they can go to the um, lab and actually borrow from uh, some tabs from um, uh, the IT lab. So this is where the presentation and then the face-to-face -face instruction and discussion happens. Okay, I think face-to-face -face learning is still relevant and it's very important for the students because this is where I teach them skills. And then they, they, they utilize their mobile device and I assign them with projects and they do peer assessment in classroom. Okay, and then they go home and uh, this is where the collaborative and self-directed learning happens in which uh, the discussion continues and the presentation through videos and uh, and the assessment okay and the cycles go on okay next slide um, okay this is the the apps that I use with them uh, Google classroom the telegram I love telegram so much okay because I, I, I personally love telegram because there's so many bots that I can use for my students and then I have a class dojo account with the students in which I keep track of their participants there okay in the classroom I use keynotes now this is a similar app as uh, PowerPoint and then uh, YouTube, Dictionary Online Survey Monkey, the Wood Wall and also the Class Dojo to keep track of their performance. And at home, they have to come back and you know uh, create project using Canva, using um, uh, YouTube and I have a 
a YouTube channel in which I uh, actually uploaded videos of my students' work there. And of course, um, Telegram has been helping me so much in which, um, uh, I mean, the bots, actually the lazy students can actually just use the Telegram to find meanings of the, the words. Okay, next slide. Alright, so this is an example of how I do it. I start with the Telegram and then I use the Padlet and then the final one, the post lesson is the assessment. Okay, sometimes I do discussion and reflection with um, the areas that usually my students love to do and then um, we'll do some one-to-one -one assessment with this particular students and that's all. Kelly, back to you. Thank you. Okay. Wow, not not quite back to me. I'm not going to let you get away with that that easily. Um, <laughs> so, so again, we we're coming back to that theme of student ownership and student choice. And yes. I've, I've got to be honest, this is the slightly overwhelming number of apps that you've got here. Um, yeah. Presumably, you didn't start by using them all at the same time. Uh, no, no. Actually, usually, usually the brainstorming app will be Padlet because my students are master of using Padlets now. Okay, absolutely. So, so we've we've used Padlet a little bit. It's so simple to use, right? It's uh, yeah. it's yes. Feedback. Okay, yes. I'm also interested. You teach in the secondary school. Yeah. So, so a lot of teachers that I've come across have said, Class Dojo is only useful for primary. It's not okay for secondary. What would you say to that? No, actually, my students love the avatar so much, and they were like, you know, when uh, the class dojo has points, so you know that is when they they were so excited to see their points collecting. So um, that's why I think um, I, I choose class dojo over Google Classroom is because because of the the fun in class dojo. It's it's something. It is. There's nothing wrong of going back if you're old and going back to become a kid. Right. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. And I know that when I was doing school leadership, I had a staff room on Class Dojo where, yes. where the teachers were able to give each other points for doing things. And even they yes. loved it. Yeah. Everyone loves getting points, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> My students love it so much. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. can, I, can I just uh, ask? Uh, I think the last time I had the pleasure of uh, actually... Uh, uh, participating in one of your webinars and you mentioned about uh, how you had very strict rules about uh, students bringing in their mobiles because that's a cause of concern for parents and yes. teachers. Uh, yes. So could you just uh, run through the, the few basic uh, rules that you had uh, established with the students for this? All right. Um, actually, of course, we when we establish rule, we, had, we need a contract. So I had a contract with my students in which in that contract I have a listed Every, the do's and the don'ts that uh, that they have to do and uh, you know by establishing the the feelings and the sense of responsibility uh, to, by telling them if you do not uh, um, obey the rules then it's your responsibility and that's not my problem so I believe that when you set when you set the rules for example um, in the morning at 7 30 o'clock you have to hand over the mobile phone to me and I will keep it in the principal's room and we use it in class and then after class I'll collect it back and you know just keep it and uh, by the time the school ends I'll return the phone to you and obviously you know when when, we, when it comes to something expensive like mobile phone everybody was like you know taking care of their uh, you know uh, it's their duty to to be to obey the the rules that I have I have established with them. I think, I, I think this again points to rules and routines being so important. Yes, it's not yes. just important for in the classroom. So most most teachers would set rules of the classroom, hands up, uh, no no talking of the teacher. But we also need rules for online learning as well. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, because they know me very well. I'm a I'm a discipline teacher in that school, so I. I actually walked the talk, so they know they know me very well. But the first day that I came into the class, I established a rule that, you know, a certain rule that some people might not be happy with it. Okay, for example, I allow them to eat in my class, but they are not allowed to be talking when I'm talking. So they know that's the first thing, the first rule that they know about me. So when it comes to mobile learning, uh, they know that my rules is 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 very important, and I I do what I. I see. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, maybe. 
and, and I think teachers they have to if they make a rule they have to follow through right there's no yes absolutely I also noticed on your your presentation here you you've got all the assessment for learning in the cycle as well because it is it's fine to set a task but if you don't mark it and you don't give feedback yes the, the, stu the students have to know their problems what what are actually the areas that they need and and it's it's very important to share because because when they they know their areas and you know they they know their areas and others who are actually doing the same thing might know that oh this is this is something that i should not be doing in my in my essay or whatever right? absolutely because we we all learn from our mistakes and yes. i think um I've learned anything in the last few months it's try and try again and you've got to keep trying and making mistakes and learning and learning and that yes. that needs to be instilled in our students as well 